Hello again. I quite see why television presenter and historian David Olusoga is the darling of the middle classes. He's a quirky historian, he wears a long scarf, trainers without socks, and on top of that, he's black. Sucking up to such a man helps to assuage the guilt which many middle-class white people feel about slavery, colonialism, and indeed even the very colour of their skins. What's not to like about such a guy? The problem is that Olu Soga is not always very good with honesty and facts, which can be a problem in an historian. I've spoken before on this subject. David Olusoga has written the forward to a new edition of the interesting narrative of the life of Olada Equiano, which is the 18th century autobiography of a former black African slave. The book is actually available free online. I give a uh, link to it in the description to this video. People can read it for themselves and also check what I say about the contents of the book. I also give a link to the Amazon page for the new edition, which enables viewers to read for free Olusoga's forward. And finally, I give a link to the interview he gave a few days ago to the Guardian newspaper. Let's see why I say that he is either trying to mislead people or that he's entirely ignorant of the book for which he has provided a forward. In the interview in the Guardian, David Olusoga says... To take the life of Equiano, for example, you can't understand Equiano's life just in Britain. This is someone who was, we think, born in Africa, enslaved in the Caribbean, who travelled the world. Right, I'm assuming that Olu Soga knows the meaning of the word enslaved. He really ought to because he talks about the subject a great deal. OK, let's have a look. See what the dictionary says. Here we are, the Oxford Dictionary of English, 2005 edition. Revised. What does it say about enslaved? Enslaved, to make someone a slave. It's the actual act of turning somebody from a free person into a slave. Somebody is enslaved. Olusoga is saying that Equiano was turned into a slave. He was enslaved in the Caribbean. This is quite false. He was actually enslaved in Africa by Africans. In chapter two of the book, he gives a very vivid description of how he was captured by African slave traders and sold to an African family, that of a blacksmith, where he was kept as a slave. Let me quote a bit. This first master of mine, as I may call him, was a smith, and my principal employment was working his bellows, which was the same kind as I had seen in my vicinity. There's a lot of talk about his fellow slaves and so on. He was kidnapped by black African slavers, enslaved, sold as a slave to another Igbo family, where he worked for months. To say that he was enslaved in the Caribbean is quite false. Then he writes, Soon after this, my master's only daughter, and child by his first wife, sickened and died, which affected him so much that for some time he was almost frantic and really would have killed himself had he not been watched and prevented. However, in a small time afterward he recovered, and I was again sold. Just to be perfectly clear, Equiano was enslaved not in the Caribbean, but in Africa. He was a slave there and was later sold as a slave to a white slave trader who then took him to the Caribbean. I hope readers understand the linguistic trick played on them here by the claim that he was enslaved in the Caribbean. The idea of black Africans keeping slaves and buying and selling them is unpalatable and so Odesoga tries to avoid it. The forward he writes for the new edition of the book is similarly either dishonest or there are errors in it which arise through ignorance. He says that Equiana tells us that, along with his sister, he was kidnapped by African raiders. They and other captives were then marched to the, Afri the Atlantic coast. Well, actually, Equiana says nothing of the sort in the book. I'm baffled by this. I've read the book. This is complete nonsense. 
he and his sister were separated from each other soon after being taken captive by the African slave traders. Uh, then they were sold to different masters, different African families. We read, the next day proved a greater day of sorrow than I had yet experienced, for my sister and I were then separated while we lay clasped in each other's arms. It was in vain that we besought them not to pass us. She was torn from me and immediately carried away, while I was left in a state of distraction not to be described. They weren't marched to the coast together at all. This is simply an, well, I say an invention of uh, Olive Stone. So I'm not quite sure what to make of that, that particular claim that he makes in the forward. The intention is obviously to give us the impression that African raiders had kidnapped Equiano and his sister to take straight to white slave traders. This would make his slavery, of course, the fault of white people rather than black Africans. In fact, he was kidnapped to be sold to other Africans, slavery being common in Africa at that time. I can think of just two possible explanations for David Olusoga saying such things. The first is that he has not actually read the book for which he has written a foreword, that is to say, the interesting narrative of the life of Lordo Equiano. This would be quite surprising and shown to be a rather lazy and incompetent historian. <laughs> the only other explanation which I can come up with is that he has read the book but is seeking deliberately to mislead people about the contents, gambling perhaps on the fact that very few people are likely to plough their way through the thing and really just buy it so they can leave it lying about to show how right on they are. This would make him a dishonest historian. <laughs> I do not say these are the only possible explanations, but they're the only ones which I can come up with offhand.